unpack the EMC Strategic Investors Forum from this week. I was down there uh, personally in New York City. Uh, the last one of these they did was two years ago uh, in New York. The one prior to that was, uh, was in Boston. Um, I might have missed one in there, but generally they do these every couple of years. And what they do is they gather all the Wall Street uh, financial analysts from the buy side and the sell side, and they bring in all the heads of the Federation. So Joe Tucci uh, gave a presentation and then turned it over to Paul Moritz and then Pat Gelsinger and then David Goulden uh, and then uh, the new uh, CFO Zane uh, took us through a lot of the details and then they did a Q&A session with all the execs. It was very informative, uh, always is, but, uh, but I have to say it was, it was pretty high level. So, so I wanted to just sort of run through my notes. Stu, maybe have you sort of interject some of your thoughts. Joe Tucci started things off, again, very high level discussion. A uh, lot of strategy uh, discussion, talking about sort of the, the waves in the industry. He had a new wave slide, which was good. Uh, changed that up a little bit. But a lot of talk about the Federation, of course, because there's a move afoot, of course, to, to make, you know, he e e forced EMC, Elliott Management, trying to force EMC to spin out VMware and, you know, relinquish its majority ownership, um, vast majority ownership. I've said all along, that ain't going to happen. It's certainly not going to happen with Tucci's in charge. And after Tucci's in charge, it ain't going to happen. Yeah, so, 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 so Dave, you know, I've, I've talked to so many companies and, and all of them at the end of last year said, there's no way that VMware stays part of the Federation. 2015, there's got to be a change, got to be a change. Sounds definitive from what you're saying that th you know we will not see a change this I, year. I, again, I, I, you know, e EMC can say, Tucci can say, well, we'll keep an open mind, and I'm, I'm sure they've, they've talked to Elliott Management. I think they have an open mind in the sense that EMC's looked at this, and they've made the decision, you know, and it's not going to change. The only way it would change is if EMC is fumbling so badly and the market sort of forces them to do that, but EMC's not fumbling. EMC's growing faster than, than you know, the, its larger peers. Uh, it's throwing off cash. You know, its stock price isn't going up as fast as people want, and it's investing. And then, so what does it do? It buys back shares like everybody else, and it just sort of maintains that balance. And so I think EMC has done a very good job of that. I tweeted out, um, the other day, I thought EMC did a good job of laying out why it is not hosed. So many people say to me, EMC is screwed. And so I like to invoke one of my business heroes, Scott McNeely, hurt me with that problem. I wish I were that screwed. And so um, EMC continues to sort of defy the, the naysayers. Uh, they can't innovate, they can't do this, they haven't had an uh, innovative product since uh, the VMAX. All that's nonsense, it doesn't matter to me. Maybe it's true, okay, you can, you can maybe criticize, you know, whatever, the incremental R&D, but they're really good at buying companies. They're really good at, at, at innovating on business models. Look at VMware, obviously, look at Pivotal, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. So, so Tucci and every speaker really emphasized the value of the Federation. That was a big theme. It was obviously pr you know, prepared, and every, after every speaker, they had a customer talking about the value of the Federation. Yeah. So it was very orchestrated. Yeah. Um, but I think it's legitimate. I think there is value there to the, the EMC approach. Um, could they get a short-term stock pump from spinning it out? Yeah, probably, but long-term, I'm not sure it would serve uh, shareholders. Yeah, so, so I mean, Dave, one of the biggest things I look at EMC is they've gotten so big and they've got good market share in a lot of the places they play. You know, how do they grow? They've done some really good M&A. I mean, you, you think just the Federation itself. I mean, VCE, one of the best acquisitions we've, we've seen, you know, of the decade of the century, you know, um, and if I look at the growth areas that, that you talked to me about, you know, Extreme IO and AirWatch and uh, Nicira with the NSX, uh, some, you know, pretty big acquisitions that they're, that they're pushing forward. I mean, EMC and the whole Federation has money. Do we expect to see a lot more M&A this year? So, I would say absolutely. So I want to address those. So that was another big topic. So I, I think they had two, maybe three. I guess they had three sort of major objectives here. One was to really sort of lay out the, the strategy overall. I think the second was to emphasize the Federation and why they're not spinning it off. And there was some discussion with the analysts among that, about that. And the third was they're spending a lot of money on six major initiatives and they're, they're losing money in those initiatives. It's, as you mentioned, it's N NSX and, and, and AirWatch, it's Extreme IO, it's DSSD, where they said they're not going to have products out until the end of the year. Uh, and we know that's going to be a 1.0 version. It's going to take some time. Uh, Scale IO. A Pivotal is, you know, by all accounts, losing money, even though it did $70 million last quarter. And Zane talked about we are 
not going to make money in 2015. We're, we're, we're going to break even in 16 and make money in 17. You, you mean profitable. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, profitable. Yeah, yeah. yeah because, right. I mean, VCE makes a lot of money. I mean, we, we were Revenue, talking yes. this week, you know, they, right. they've got and, almost and, $2 and, billion. And by the way, and, I think know. if you look at Extreme I.O., I think some of that is in flux. I, I mean, I think Extreme I.O., if it doesn't make money now, I mean, they did a half a billion dollars in bookings uh, this past year. They did $300 million in bookings in Q4. They're very close to profitability in my estimation. So I would expect that uh, that some of the pieces there are going to Gonna, so I think there might be some well, sandbagging in there for the street. Sounds like pretty fast growth to a billion dollars for Extreme IO, though. And Pivotal. Yeah. Uh, so Pivotal, when, when Pivotal came out, they said we will be, Marit said we will be a billion dollar, this was in 2013, we will be a billion dollar company by 2018, within five years. And I think they're you know, well on their way to do that. The other thing that Tucci introduced was this notion of Platform 2.5. Platform, <laughs> you know, platform 3 they talk about all the right. time, but Platform 2.5 is a tweener. First of all, I've never liked the Platform 3. Platform 3 is a marketing term. It came up with IDC. It's a very fuzzy definition. It's like, yeah, anything that's cloud, mobile, social, big data is Platform 3. It's like, uh, okay. Uh, it's, it's, now, maybe they've got some deeper definitions than that, but I've not, I've not seen them. So it's, to me, it's always been a marketing term. But I think if you follow the workloads, you can identify what's going on in so-called Platform 3. So I think Platform 3 is great from the standpoint of organizing a company around a mission to focus on those new emerging apps. And those are mobile apps. Yeah, and, really and I mean, happening. Dave, just, just from what I see, it's really a, a lot of the discussion is going from really kind of monolithic applications to more microservice driven uh, applications. So, you know, Hadoop, rather, it's distributed, uh, those mobile environments, it's not just something that I stick on a server or a group of servers that needs to be, you know, spread off the area. So I, 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 I don't disagree with what, what your statement is, but um, there's very different infrastructure requirements for some of those modern applications and cloud applications, um, and you know we're having some challenges from the infrastructure guys to move there. So when I was listening to Joe talk about uh, Platform 2.5, you know what came into my mind? You know what's a great example of a Platform 2.5? The mainframe, IBM Z, because <laughs> it runs Linux, it's, it's now got analytics systems, you know, uh, uh, systems of, of, of insight running on top of it with blue acceleration and, and data in memory. You know, it, we're talking Docker for, for mainframe. I mean, that's, we're talking about a modernization of a, of a legacy platform. That's what 2.5 is, and it's a good strategy. That's how we're going to bridge because people want uh, a hybrid. We know that. Uh, Amazon says hybrid cloud is, you know, not something that we're interested in. Customers want it. Uh, Pat Gelsinger called the public cloud a cul-de-sac. All right, explain so, that, Dave. <laughs> well, so I think what he meant is you're not going to put all your workloads into Amazon. It's just not going to happen. Um, uh, Alex uh, McDonald said he, he actually, and I didn't, I didn't pick up on this, he may have said this, private cloud is a dead end. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. I guess the point being, you have to have some mix of public and private. Everybody wants that. And so, th so from a strategy standpoint, um, v Cloud Air, uh, uh, e you know, EMC Hybrid Cloud Service, those are things that, that the Federation is going to drive, and they have to. They, they were sanguine about v Cloud Air. We've not seen it in the marketplace, but they're talking a good game. And I have to say, Stu, with very few exceptions, <laughs> EMC tends to deliver on what they say they're going to yeah, do. Yeah, so, so, so the critic critique I have on that, Dave, is you know, everything that Pat talks about is you know, it's anti-Amazon. You know, don't use AWS, we all lose when you know, we talk to the partners on it. And if you want to do hybrid, that's great, and we're going to give you both ends of the hybrid. Customers today, they're using VMware in the mm -hmm. data center, and they're using Amazon and Azure in, in the public cloud. And if, you know, and EMC is embracing it in certain pieces, but VMware you know, is, is just, you know, it's not in their DNA, it's not something they're going to do, I, I, and, and it's fighting against customers. I, I and couldn't what agree doing. more, Stu. I yeah. just don't see VMware's, you know, public cloud, you know, slash hybrid cloud strategy taking hold yet. They have one, um, but th they've got to do a better job executing on that. And we know, uh, I said that about EMC tends to, to deliver. VMware hasn't always, always delivered the whole, you know, application layer, yeah. and you know, it took them a long time to get uh, a desktop virtualization right. Seems like they have that. That, that nailed now. So they, they're stubborn, aren't they? Yeah. Um, Joe talked about a billion dollar cloud business. Now that's maybe a kitchen sink number, but EMC can sell infrastructure to cloud service providers. So right. if you add it all up, all those 4,000 partners they have, they're doing about a billion dollars in, in business to those partners. Uh, he talked about their R&D strategy, 12% in, uh, in, in organic R&D, 8% in acquisitions over the last five years. 
Um, so it was good. Very high level. Um, in the Q and A session, I'll just say, I'll just say Joe talked about because they always ask him about the complexity of the portfolio, and he said that he made the quote: "If you have a seam, you'll see three competitors in a nanosecond." So his point is overlap is better than, than gaps. And yeah, and I guess that, that goes to one of the points as to, you know, how do EMC and VMware compete against each other? Is that a problem or is that useful? Well, I think that's, right? that's why EMC is not going to spin off VMware. I mean, VMware would win you know, if they spun it off. They would, and, and, and I think that EMC is in a position to, you know, adjudicate how VMware wins. Yeah. And so, so you said there were a bunch of customers that talked about why the Federation was, was great for them. A any, you know, anecdotes you can share? Yeah, I mean, it, it, the examples were, um, hey, I, I can now uh, not only talk to my EMC rep about what storage I'm going to buy, but I can, I'm trying to digitize my business. Yeah. And to do that, I need a big data platform. Um, and that's something I can talk to Pivotal about. And oh, by the way, I'm a, I'm a VMware account, and I can talk to those guys, and I can have a strategic discussion. So Pat made a comment, which I thought was very interesting. He said, we, you know, these are tumultuous times. We live in tumult. Um, it's good to be big in those times. Uh, in those times. It's good to be strategic yeah. with customers. And I think that, again, that was a underlying theme at the event, and you heard that from all the customers were there. Um, Joe handed off the, the mic to Moritz and said that he'd been, he'd been hounding Moritz for years to try to get him to come to work for him, finally did, get, you know, gave him VMware. Obviously, Moritz was very successful with, with VMware. Um, Moritz made a statement, which I tweeted out yesterday. He said, in the long run, open source is where all large ecosystems will get built. Now, that was a really fascinating statement to me. I, I think... Clearly Pivotal is going all in on open source. EMC was almost anti-open source, a as was VMware for a long time, and maybe still is. Uh, and I've talked to John Rose about this when he first came on. I said, open source is something you guys got to get your act together on. And I think they've said, Paul, you go. Yeah, Dave, uh, exactly. Last year at EMC World, I got to ask uh, Goulden, Moritz, and Gelsinger about open source, and Goulden and Gelsinger said open source is not you know, a key part of you know, how we go to market and how we work. That being said, I, I've seen a lot of effort inside EMC and VMware uh, you know, over the last year. Of course, OpenStack's an area that they're both pushing hard in, uh, and you know, from, uh, from an EMC standpoint, they've got a new group called EMC Code uh, that's trying to help uh, you know, work on the developers but Pivotal is where most of that action is. Uh, the other thing I'm curious, Dave, did they talk about Docker much? Because uh, where you see both Pivotal and VMware are cozying up to CoreOS and Rocket, which is, of course, the, the, the company and the project that's trying to be the alternative to Docker. So while VMware has and, and Pivotal have both said, oh, we love Docker and we're going to work with them, they're working hard to support the opposition, which slows down the market, creates a little bit of uh, I uncertainty out there. I think that is really there. perceptive uh, in, and right on. And I, I don't think they mentioned the word Docker. In fact, I'm 99.9% .9 sure. They, however, talked about containers, yeah. and they talked about containers without compromise, and I think you're absolutely right. Containers are a threat. They want to slow it down, they want to understand it, you know, and, and, but they did make the statement that we are going to, Pat said, we are going to embrace every new important technology that comes out. Containers is an example. Okay, great. Microsoft Azure, you know, <laughs> I mean, there's an agreement there. You can run VMware in Azure, but I don't think Microsoft came up yesterday at all, except on the slide that Joe showed that they were outpacing Microsoft's revenue growth. So, so yes, but they have to be very careful. Again, same thing with OpenStack. Pat said, we are going to monetize OpenStack this year. So they, but in fairness, they're smart about that. That's a smart thing to do. They have to figure it out, come up with a strategy to actually participate in that market and add value uh, for their customers without getting disintermediated. So. The other thing Maritz talked about, and I'll, I'll sort of move on to, to Pat's uh, a couple of quick comments. Um, they got three products, really, the, uh, the, the big data platform. Uh, Pivotal Labs is still in business. They're doing big deals. It's almost like the tip of the spear. They do these little projects, you know, maybe you know, $100,000, and it leads to bigger projects well, that's, and bigger that's projects. That's where we said the revenues and services, right? Well, that's the thing is big data revenue is in services, although although Moritz took a swipe at Cloudera without mentioning Cloudera, saying you know, that our goal is to build a software as a service, and that's really what Pivotal, uh, what data, the data platform and Cloud Foundry are all about, is building, building subscription revenue, unlike some of the other big guys whose, you know, a lot of their revenue comes from training, although we, 
we had a discussion with Mike Olson the other day, and he said definitively more than half of our business is from software licenses. Oh. So half the booking. So I don't know if that's 51% or what. I think a substantial amount is probably still from services. And as you point out, Stu, over 40% of the big data market is, is services. So, um, but I think, and I talked to Moritz offline, and I, it was just, oh, another thing I want to share with you is Tucci made a statement, and I tweeted this out as well. In his opening remarks, is hey, we're the, we're the smallest of the big kind of thing. He didn't use that line again, but he was intimating that. And he said, we have to compete with guys, you know, like we've got to compete with IBM Bluemix. Now, IBM Bluemix is the poster child for Cloud Foundry success. Right. So I asked Moritz about that afterwards, and, you know, Moritz is Moritz. He sort of shrugged, and he goes, yeah, you know. <laughs> it's like, like the time years ago he told me, yeah, we're at war with everybody when he was with VMware. Right. So he's sort of, he's seen it all. <laughs> and his point is, look, I know Joe's saying that, and Joe's right. We do compete with IBM for cloud, but I'm really pleased with Cloud Foundry uh, and the progress that we've made, and Bluemix is an example of that. So, yeah, it's not all that different from saying that you know NSX is going to be one of their biggest growth engines, which attacks Cisco, which is their biggest partner uh, for building the two billion dollar VCE <laughs> acquisition. Right. So it's uh, always fun with the co-opetition in the IT space. So in the last few <laughs> minutes, let me sort of sort of go through Pat's uh, conversation. I'll talk about Goulden and 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 Rap. Pat mentioned they're now a $6 billion software company. Uh, they're number five in software. Remember HP used to brag about how they're number six software company, but HP's really not a software company, and they're, they're sort of now with Vertica and Autonomy, they've got a piece that could become software, and when they spin off the enterprise, blah, blah, blah. But, but VMware keeps moving up, you know, and doing really, 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 really well from a revenue standpoint. Customers love them, we know that. So they're in a good, good spot. They have to walk the fine line with partners, but they're doing that, I think. Um, Four key initiatives. They got to win with the software defined data center. They got to they got to win with vCloud Air and vCloud Air, as 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 you know, needs some work. They've got to get the architecture battle, the next generation architecture battle around whether it's hybrid and software defined data center, bringing in vSAN, bringing in NSX. That's key, and then the mobility. They brought in Sanjay Poonin from SAP. He's, you know, obviously a great leader. He's got a strong team. They seem to be getting it done. You know, Citrix went off the rails for a little bit. Citrix is now coming back, you know, with their, their uh, uh, CEO now refocused and re-energized. So that's very interesting. But so he laid out, Pat had a lot of content that I won't, won't go into here, but a lot of announcements that you've been following, vSphere 6. I mean, it's it's only March and they've had a huge number of announcements already this year. Yeah, absolutely. vSphere 6 is big. Dave, I'm, I'm curious, did they touch at all uh, on kind of the employee actions that they've done, both VMware and EMC have done some cuts, been a lot of shuffling at the decks. It sounds it seems like VMware has really stabilized their their management, you, you know, you called out Sanjay, you got Bill Fathers, you got, you know, a lot of leaders now that have been there for, you know, a year or two. Um, a but yeah. there. Um, first of all, Joe Tucci, you know, he's, he's, he's up there, he's avuncular, and he's just so good. <laughs> he's lovely. I hope, I hope he never retires. I hope I retire before Joe Tucci retires. And, uh, but so, he, he cares about his people. You can tell. Um, and, but, you know, like Jack Welch, you, you gotta, <laughs> you know, prune every now and then, and they do that. They prune, they're still, they, they hi they've hired a lot of people, as you well know. Um, he stressed, we've got 21,000 go-to-marketing professionals in our organization. We've got 16,000 engineers and developers, and we've got 22,000 services and consulting professionals. You spent a lot of time on that, and so, um, you know, no apologies there. But yeah, he definitely uh, addressed the human resource aspect of it. And the other thing he said that I'll add is, he said, we are really good at attracting and retaining good people. And he pointed to Bill Cook and Scott Yara and Paul Moritz. I mean, these guys got dough. They don't have to hang out at you know, the big evil machine company. No, yeah. they're there because, because Tucci and the board enable them to have their sandbox and to grow their businesses and to do their open source thing and compete with, with EMC. If they didn't, if they didn't have that kind of culture, it would fail. And so. That's why I keep saying, people just, they don't understand the cultural aspects. You work there, so you know. But so, um, not, 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 notwithstanding that, they got a lot of challenges. And, and one of them that came up in the meeting was, geez, you got EPS growth in the single digits for the next couple of years, and all of a sudden you're assuming, you know, this big pop in, single, in, in, in EPS growth, and I don't understand it. And they talked about how a lot of that was going to come from their new initiatives that I'll address in a second. I want to talk about uh, David Goulden. He gave a lot of data. Extreme I.O., $500 million in bookings, $300 million uh, last quarter. Um, he, said, he said something that's not true. He said, we are the only scale-out, Extreme I.O. is the only scale-out architecture. Everybody else is dual controller. 
Well, I think solid fire is probably even more scale out, <laughs> you know, than, right. than uh, in terms of number of nodes than uh, than extreme. Although extremes obviously scale out, I think common area, and I think even the IBM 9000 announcement is true scale out. I have to you know get David Floyer's take on that. But so there are others, uh, but nonetheless, he showed some market share data, showed a steadily increasing progression for extreme IO. And everybody's going to say, well, that's because they're subsidizing. What's your take on that? Yeah, uh, so, you know, first of all, I mean, from a revenue standpoint, there's no doubt that EMC is now number one in the uh, all-flash array uh, market, Dave, uh, but the, the question is, is how much is that just the sales team executing? You know, how much is it them, you know, selling a big deal and, you know, shoving it in there? So, I mean, we, we pushed some hard questions to the Extreme IO team, um, and first of all, they said, you know, it, it took them a couple of quarters to become profitable by the end of last year. Uh, the, the group was profitable, um, and when you look at the mix, a third of the customers that are buying Extreme IO are you know new logos, new accounts, not EMC. So it can't be you know selling them uh, you know a ten million dollar deal and giving it away if that's a third of them. There's a third of them where it's new use cases that they're uh, adding it on, and then a third were upgrades. So you know th they said you know they are within you know all of their normal uh, you know margins. Uh, they, they're working hard. They feel they've got a really good product uh, in this space. You know, leader I I product in this space. Um, so you know, EMC is very you know aware of the fud that's out there, um, and they say that they're they're winning the deals that they should, uh, and uh, you know they're, they're growing big time and and and, and pushing so hard. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, obviously Pure is doing well. It's going and they're attacking Vmax. It's going to be interesting to see how that whole thing plays out. Um, and you've got new entrants like three par really you know starting to get aggressive. Yeah, and, I mean just just what, an interesting thing if you look organizationally at EMC, Extreme IO now reports to what's called the core technology group. So they report to the same people that Symmetrics, the, the yeah. Vmax and VNX. And group. they always separated. Those and they, in the they past. were always separate because uh, you know <laughs> David Floyer used to always joke the number one competitor for Extreme IO was Vmax. Um, right. Because the VMAX guys don't want those going in because Extreme IO should be cannibalizing that big time this year. Um, and uh, and the reason I brought up 3PAR is David Scott, who's now retired, ma made a statement to me on the Cube a while back. He said, he said, Dave, these new startups, very few are going to be able to achieve escape velocity. Unlike the storage virtualization guys, 3PAR, Isilon, he threw, threw data domain in there, Compellent, uh, et cetera who were able to achieve that because the economy was bad, the big guys were sort of not paying attention and, and, and took their eye off the ball, they were very much paying attention to Flash. I mean, EMC started the whole Flash craze, and even Pat Gelsinger on theCUBE said, well, we were behind, we got behind in Flash. He said that at Oracle Open World, but we are going all in, and they made that sort of you know, placeholder announcement, the freeze the market announcement, right? Yep, yep. The VF Cash or whatever that was, but, and then they went out and made an acquisition Product wasn't where it needed to be. It took a long time to get to market, but it's ramping very, very rapidly. He talked about a software-only Isilon uh, coming this year. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. So that I don't know if that so, was so public it, it was interesting because you know Isilon. Th there's uh, if you look at what we looked at with Server SAN, um, or you look at Hadoop environments. Can I take something like, like Isilon, which has been doing good in the big data, um, and can I move the the application, the compute to it? And architecturally, I mean, Isilon just uses standard compute nodes. So there's yeah. there's a lot that you could do with that. Uh, the other one that you know we think we're going to see a lot more this year from EMC is the Scale IO because that was an interesting acquisition, uh, it, it doesn't have all the enterprise features, but it was built for scale, which is very different from um, you know most of the hyper-converged offerings out there. So, a little bit of Viper talk. They didn't, yeah. they didn't give uh, revenue data on Viper, they gave customer data, 380 customers, which probably means there's not a lot of revenue there <laughs> if they're not giving revenue data. Um, but you know, one other thing I forgot to mention Isilon, they really emphasize the 25% year-on-year growth, so Isilon is, is smoking hot. Great acquisition, 2.5 billion, big number but growth piece. So the other piece is that those six things that we talked about earlier, NSX all the way down to, to VCE, that are not making money collectively, and EMC said, no apologies, they're not going to make money until 2017. Um, some of the Wall Street guys were kind of pushing on that. Well, if you're so confident of that, well, why don't you just write a bigger dividend check and say, here, trust us, you know, here's, we're going <laughs> to, instead of asking us to wait, why don't you just write the check and say, yeah, don't worry, it'll pay off down the road. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Joe kind of said, mm, nah, that's not kind of how what we're doing. The other thing that came up is that people were saying, well, why don't you raise more money? Why don't you, you know, take on some debt? You could, you could, your balance sheet is very strong. Why don't you weaken it a bit? And Goulden was like shaking his head, and Joe was like, Zane, you know, uh, basically gave the 
sort of corporate response, like, look, we're responsible and there's, there's no reason to, and then Joe took it over and said, there's no reason to, to, to start getting over our skis and raise a ton of dough that we don't need to. We'll go to markets to, we'll to increase the dividend and the stock buybacks and things like that. You know, we'll, we'll do that tactically, but we're not going to go nuts. We're not going to be irresponsible. And this is another part of the Federation. Pat talks about this a lot. EMC providing governance. It's almost like you got the bi-coastal situation. You got the guys in the West Coast, Maritz, and Pat, and now, you know, you Churchwood, Desai, others. West Coast, Jeremy, who was there yesterday, uh, didn't speak. A lot of West Coast presence. Now, and then you got the East Coast, you know, conservative, you know, stayed, low risk. <laughs> That's where RSA happens to be out here. So very in interesting juxtaposition, that, and they really try to pound that, that governance theme. Yeah, um, no, nobody asked if they're moving the headquarters to the West Coast? Nobody asked. Right. Well, I think it's pretty obvious. <laughs> VMware's there, Pivotal's Head, there. Headquarters stays here. And, uh, <laughs> most of the but there's headquarters out, out there too, right? Yeah. So, um, so that was kind of it. If you want to check out my tweet stream, there's some great stuff in there. Uh, David Goulden had some really good slides that were a compendium of IDC, Gartner, you know, in, in EMC data. The one thing on there is I still think that they're, you know, as hot as Extreme IO is, their data still shows it's a, just a small slice of the market, maybe a few billion by 2018. I think it's low, Stu. I think that number is... That you'll see it on my tweet stream. It's the dark blue. I think that number is going to get much, much, much bigger. Um, and then I think you'll, you know, have an opportunity to see some of the other things that I tweeted, which were some of the, the killer quotes, like Tucci saying customers want stacks, but they don't want to be locked in. And he said, "It's a fine line we walk." You know, he understands that line. So, really fascinating um, discussions. Uh, not a lot of new information, but it was sort of packaged very well and and very professionally. And I think just you know, underscored solid company. You know, do you run out and say, okay, this company's gonna, gonna change the world? Mm, maybe not, but what you do say is, this company has a big customer base, they're highly customer focused, they're innovative, they know how to do acquisitions, they're gonna keep throwing off a lot of cash, and they're not going anywhere. They're gonna be, I think, very successful going forward. And personally, I've said this a long time, I think they're undervalued because of the VMware piece. If you look at EMC's core business compared to NetApp's core business, they get no, nowhere near the value of the revenue that, say, a NetApp gets as a pure play independent storage company, and yet EMC continues to gain share, they continue to grow faster, they continue to throw off more cash than virtually all their large peers. So I'll give you the final word, Stu, based on you know, what you heard and what you've been hearing in the Twitter sphere, what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, so it, it, you, know, you, you look at them, Dave, and I mean the Federation, uh, this model's been there for a few years now, a couple years now, it was two years ago you said when they, they put that together. Um, th they, they seem to be interlocking much better together, um, and uh, you know we used to call AMC the execution machine company. Uh, so th they've got a lot of bets that they're making, a lot of markets that they're pushing into. Um, you know, the, the Wall Street guys I'm, sh I'm sure have things that they'd rather see, um, but EMC's got a clear vision, they're all marching down the same path, uh, and they're a force to be reckoned with in all the markets that they play in. You know, I said we're going to end it there, but you know, it sounds like we're EMC fanboys, yeah. which I'm a fan. I've said I'm a fan of EMC, but there's not without challenges. Um, you know, specifically the core business, you know, VMAX and VNX, they're going to get, they're getting attacked by, by Flash, getting attacked by vSAN. I mean, vSAN's not the only software-defined architecture yeah. that's out there. Now, of course, EMC owns vSAN, but there's, there's alternatives out there. Yeah. What happens when Tucci actually finally does retire? Sure. You know, I, I mean, Dave, as, as this flash wave takes over, I mean, EMC has had about 30% of you know, the disk market, and you know, what, what does this look like? There's a lot more companies that are, that are fighting for that. Convergence is, is a big scrum. Cloud is a huge, 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 huge threat uh, to everything the EMC is doing, and from a VMware standpoint, you know, I mean, Amazon and Microsoft you know, are, are just going after their business uh, big time. So absolutely, there's, there's and huge Microsoft threats is to them. looking solid based and, on and, the numbers. And, and that we've Microsoft, seen. I, I mean, you know, I mean, our survey data that was the one, the big, the biggest finding of our survey data was how well Microsoft Azure is doing, uh, you know. And under Nadella, they've got a new focus. And so, you're right. That's a big that that. Bi I have been very vocal about the economies of scale of cloud. That's something that EMC's got to contend with, and they don't have a good answer today, in my opinion. But they are investing to yeah. get one. And what's interesting, I was I was having a chat with with a VC this week, and he said, you know, where Microsoft is really killing it is on all their applications, all the Microsoft applications, all the legacy stuff. But in the new world, if it all goes kind of the cloud, mobile, social, you know, all that kind of piece, you know, Microsoft doesn't have a huge play there, and that's where Pivotal really needs to play a big role for the Federation because um, if 
everything starts going to the cloud, um, and that could erode VMware and EMC, will Pivotal be able to uh, pick that up and you know, be, be the next big IT player? So I think, I think there, there's a transition coming. There's a market transition coming, and there's a management transition coming. Um, the, the guys who are running EMC and, and, and the Federation, they've been around for a while, right? I mean, you know, they're as old as I am. All right, so they're going to be around for a little bit. Tucci is going to retire at some point. What happens when Tucci retires? Who does the board put in? Can that individual attract and, and motivate people the way that, that Tucci was able to? How long is Moritz in it? You know, the guy looks so uninterested when he's up there giving a talk, but obviously he's engaged. People will crawl through glass for the guy. Pat is energetic. Pat's going to be around for a while. I mean, he's up there running around. He's in, he, you know, he's, he's in great shape, and so... You know, he's not going anywhere, I don't think. But who knows? You know, you never know. Will he run the whole thing? Some, some uncertainty there, and I think that the board has some big challenges down the road in terms of, uh, of you know, who gets put in place post-Tucci. But, but in general, I've been saying it, the rich are getting richer in this business. You know, you look at what, what's happening with Oracle, you know, even Cisco, while well, they've got some challenges, certainly uh, um, um, EMC we've been talking about, uh, Microsoft, you know, HP, would have liked to seen a better quarter from them, but that's a topic for another day. All right, Stu, I think we're played out on this one. All right, thanks very much for hanging with me, and uh, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.